everybody. It's Amy from the Monshire. And I want to welcome you to our first online um, webinar. We, this is our first one. So we're very excited to have so many of you joining us. And we are, um, at, at it being the first one, please bear with us if we have any little technical difficulties along the way. We are definitely learning as we go, just like you are. So today, just a couple housekeeping things before I turn it back over to Rebecca. Um, we're going to be using two features that you probably see on the bottom of your screen, um, or you may have to touch your screen to have them show up. But the two features that we're going to be using are the Q&A. And the Q&A is um, going to be the best way to get us questions. And those questions are just going to come um, mostly to me. And then when there are questions, I'm going to let Rebecca know that somebody has a question. So there's two ways we can answer that. One, I might just tap you and answer. The other is you may, um, we may answer it live. So we have a couple options. That's the best way if you have a question. If you have a comment or responding to something that Rebecca has said, then we're going to be using the chat feature. And the chat feature, there's a lot of different ways you can communicate. Um, you can communicate with just Rebecca and I by selecting the panelist. You can communicate with the whole group. And if you do communicate with the whole group, remember, everybody's going to see it. Um, and then that's just going to be a I will be looking for questions there too, but sometimes there's a lot of information in the chat. So the best way for a question is to put it in that Q&A. And there is a third feature there, which is a hand raise. Um, we're not gonna be using that today. Um, so don't worry about that one. And I think um, we here are going to get started in just a second, going back to Rebecca. And I'm very excited to see what she has planned for us. And I think, Rebecca, is there anything else I should add right now? Or are we ready to send it back to you? I think we're ready to see a giant cockroach. All right, I am going to spotlight you. So hopefully everybody right now is just <laughs> seeing you. And we we'll I like it. everyone wave, say good morning, cockroach. And since the museum's been closed these last couple of months, what I did is I brought the museum's cockroaches to my house to take care of them. My husband isn't excited about it, but my cat is very excited. And our plan today for meeting our cockroaches, our plan is I wanna introduce you to these cockroaches first. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a break from this screen and I have a microscope I'm gonna be attaching so that you'll be able to see these cockroaches up close with a microscope too. And then I have a surprise insect for us after you meet the cockroaches too. So excellent. Now, if you do have questions, remember you can use that question and answer button on the bottom of your screen. But Amy and I also have questions for you too. And to ask you questions, we're gonna be using some holes. So our first question is about cockroaches. You're going to see a box pop up right in front of you. Hey, I want to know if you've ever had a chance to see a cockroach before. So what you're going to do is just click on one of those buttons and hit submit. Let's see how experiment, experienced you are with cockroaches. I'm going to give you a second to do that and I'm going to catch a cockroach that's trying to escape. And Rebecca, while people are answering, we had our first question for you to answer at some point about how big the cockroaches are. Oh, to give you a few more people size. to vote. So. Now, this is a full grown cockroach right here. And at full size, they can be one, two years old. And this one, if you put on your hands, if you're a kid, this cockroach is the length of your finger. If you're a grown up, it's about half that length. Another good comparison is, is about the same size as my nose. So it's a pretty big cockroach. Now this species of cockroach is a hissing cockroach from Madagascar. 
and one of the biggest cockroaches in the world. Ooh, we have the results of our poll. Let's see, it looks like it's a fairly good tie with as many people having never seen a cockroach as those who have gotten to see them at the museum or in your kitchen at home. <laughs> Excellent, okay. Well, these cockroaches you will never see in your kitchen at home because this is a wild species of cockroach. This boy, this is a boy by the way, this boy lives in the wild in Madagascar out in the woods underneath the leaves and in the dirt. There's only a few species that like to live in our kitchens. The other 3,000 are wild roaches in the woods. And this cockroach is, I said a hissing cockroach. What I want you to do, turn your volume up as loud as you can. Let's see if you can hear this cockroach hiss. It's his way of saying, wait a second, do not eat me, do not eat me. Let's see if you can hear him say that. Ooh, I got him close to my mic. Let's see, was anyone able to hear the hissing of that cockroach right there? <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Now, cockroaches are insects so like insects they have six legs oh nice work on listening to this hissing um, the legs on a cockroach those six legs are really spiky another good reason not to eat it and other features of a cockroach how to tell them apart from other insects is they have super long antenna if you take your arm and reach all the way out in front of your head that's how long your antenna would be if you were a cockroach. They can be as long as their entire body. This boy has some really long ones right there. Oh, and cockroaches, they are very, they're very shy animals. To stay safe, they stay hidden. And so one way to stay safe and make sure no one, well, eats their head off is they protect their head. This cockroach's head is underneath the shield right there too. And so when he is protecting himself, he hunkers down just like a turtle, keeping his head safe underneath that shield. Now, I think what I wanna do now is use that microscope. So and I'm gonna Rebecca, switch over to our microscope. That came in. Can and those now? That, look at the questions you have. Um, so we have a couple questions. Um, one is what do they eat? Oh. Yep. So there's three that I have here. So okay. now that first question of what do they eat? What they eat here at my house is they eat my dog's food. There's a piece of dog food I just put under the microscope there. So at the museum, we feed them dog food and other treats. In the wild, they're eating all of those dead plants and those rotting plants and roots and bark and microbes and bugs that are underneath that forest floor. So they're scavengers and decomposers in the wild. What's another question? One was, um, does it scare predators when it hisses? Oh, and then what are their predators? Oh, I definitely know it can scare predators because I've had people at the museum drop the cockroach when it hissed at them. And that's pretty funny because primates, are a good predator of cockroaches, especially in Madagascar where all those lemurs are. So anything that would root around the forest floor, lemurs, primates, things like raccoons, possums, skunks, those are all those animals that would love to eat a cockroach. Of course, you'd have to worry for those spiky legs. I'll zoom in and see if you wanna eat something with legs this spiky. Oh, now there was another question too, wasn't there, Amy? Yeah, we're getting a bunch here, and I think a couple are going to lead to where you're going. Um, there was a couple questions about where they live and whether they're invasive here. Wow. Ah. Now this is a tropical species, which means they like it warm, so they're not invasive here. Um, this is a species you can find on the giant island of Madagascar, which is part of Africa, the continent. There's also similar species in Australia too. So you can go to Australia to see cockroaches and not like kangaroos. And then invasive, and let's see, our local species, 
about five species like to live in our kitchens, and those can be found all around the world where they've traveled from one country to another. But this species, you can only find in the wild back in Madagascar, Australia. And then a couple people have noticed something is moving on the cockroach. So if you want to talk Let me a zoom bit about the out on my microscope and see if I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't see anything moving on that cockroach. Let me see if I can turn him over. Doesn't always like to be on his belly. Oh wait, you're right. There is there is something on that cockroach. I'm gonna zoom in. And in the middle of the screen are these little white dots. And those white dots are alive. Those are mites. They're arachnids, they have eight legs like those ticks and spiders we were looking at during Pictionary. And these mites eat, oh, they love to eat all the dead stuff falling off of the cockroaches, like their skin, pieces of their exoskeleton. They can eat the cockroaches poop. They're very good at keeping a cockroach clean. So think about that. Instead of like taking a bath every day, you could just get covered in mites and they could keep you clean. Hold still, boy. But those mites, my bug has bugs. They're much more symbiotic, which means they help the cockroach, than parasitic, which means they hurt the cockroach. Nice work. Who else was able to see those mites crawling on that cockroach? Uh -huh. Nice. Rebecca, I've got a whole lot of questions. Do you want me to keep going or do you want to share a few things and then keep stop? Going. I'll zoom on a few different things as we answer some of those questions. All right. Well, there was a question about its legs, so that might be a good one to zoom in on. Oh. Somebody asked about, Asa asked about why the legs are spiky. Oh, stick out your tongue. And if I zoom in on these legs, I want you to imagine trying to chew something that's spiky. It's a really good defense for those to make sure no one swallows them. And I have been poked by those spikes going the wrong way. And that also makes me jerk back from that cockroach too. So really good defense on those spiky legs. They also, if I zoom on a, in on a foot right here, they have, two, instead of toes, they have these two hooks on their foot, which makes it really easy for them to hold on to things. It is hard to pick that cockroach up when it is firmly stuck and hooked into what it's holding on to. There's a good view of a mite. There's a good view of a mite. I'll draw a circle around it. You can see it crawling over the exoskeleton cockroach there. <laughs> um, and then Rebecca, people have a couple questions about their life cycle, about like how long they live and just kind of how they live. Oh, perfect. Now this probably means that I should show you a baby cockroach. Now, a baby cockroach, unlike a baby butterfly or beetle that hatches out as a larva, a baby cockroach is a tiny little duck, and it looks just like a miniature adult when it hatches. Are you ready to see the baby? One, two, three. There it is. And compared to the adult, it's really tiny. Let me put it under the microscope because it is so small. And the nymphs, there they are. Oh, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna get that microscope on right here. There's our microscope. And this is a baby or a nymph cockroach right here. And it would take about a year for it to get as big as the adult we were looking at before. But even tiny, you can see those long antenna. And you can see it's tiny little spikes on its legs. Oh, this one's kind of fun. Let me show you something else fun. Right at the back, we have these long antenna in the front. The cockroaches are cool. That little bump right there and that little bump right there, those are bottom antenna. Imagine, take your hands and put them on your backside, stick them out. Imagine having antenna on your bum. It's hard to sneak them up on a cockroach. Antenna in front and sensors in back. 
There we um, go. Couple more about, maybe we can see on this one, I'm not sure. Uh, somebody asked what the little dots on the side of each segment are on the back. Oh, yeah, here, let me take my boy right here and put, let go boy. He's stuck to me. Let me put him under the microscope. And those dots, hold still. There you can see that size comparison between the adult and the nymph right there. I'm gonna put the nymph away because it's really easy to lose that in my living room. But as I put him on, let's see. Those black dots you can see on each of the section of this fellow's abdomen, those, take a really big breath everyone, fill up your lungs because those are the breathing holes on this cockroach. Insects don't breathe through their mouths. They breathe through these tiny holes on their sides. So imagine having holes up and down your belly to breathe through. Nice observations, tiny mites, tiny breathing holes and spiracles right there. And Rebecca, it's about 1120. I was thinking maybe one more question about the cockroach. And then I think there's another special guest. Wait, but if you want to, oh, there you can really see those back end antenna or sensors on this cockroach's belly. Let's so somebody see. asked so how you tell a boy from a girl. Oh, a boy from a girl. Someone just asked about boys and girls. I said, this is a boy. Let me catch a girl. Well, she was on me earlier. I think I lost her. Let's see. Oh, there is a girl. I'll be right there. She's putting up a fight. Okay. Oh, perfect. I have two cockroaches here. And what I want you to look at to tell them apart is not color or size. Instead, I had mentioned earlier that they had that shield they like to hide their heads under. The girl, which is on my thumb right here, she's wiggling at you, has a very smooth shield. She doesn't have any bumps on it. The boy looks like a rhino on that shield. Here's the boy right now. Do you see those big bumps on his shield? That's how I tell them apart. Oh, now you can see them like two horns by each of his antenna. So the boys have those bumps and those girls don't. Nice noticing of that difference. Mm -hmm. And I do have that extra surprise insect I wanted to show you today too. Um, before we do that, as I'm getting ready for that, I do we, Amy and I, we do have, I wanna show you her belly too. We do have a question for you about the cockroaches now that you've gotten to see them up close with a microscope and here on Zoom. So Amy's gonna put up a question on what you would like to do if you got to meet a cockroach today. So take a look at that. And I'm gonna get ready with our next insect. Let's see, we're getting ready. Okay, as we're getting ready here, I think, let's see, Amy, how are those answers going on what people would like to do if they met a cockroach today? They're coming in. We have a few more people still waiting to go. So we'll let that another few seconds go here. Once you ask those, answer that question about the cockroaches, you may be able to guess what our surprise insect is going to be. If you think you have a guess of what that surprise insect is, you can write it in that chat box. All right, it looks like we're pretty close. I'm gonna share the results here and it looks like most people would like to look at it, but there's gonna be some people who wanna to touch it and hold it and some people who wanna make it their pet. Nice. Now I hate to tell you, but this is not a real insect. This is a wooden insect. It is a wooden cricket, but the insect I wanted to show you as your surprise is right here. Anyone notice that this stick has some extra legs attached to it? The master of camouflage. I wanted to show you a 
stick insect. These animals are amazing at camouflage. Not only do they look like a stick, they act like a stick too. Right now, she is not moving. She's holding perfectly still. And when I got her out of her cage this morning, she was holding her legs out. So she looked like a long, long stick. <laughs> now, so they both look and act like sticks there. And her head looks like a bud. You know what? I think we should look at her head up close with the microscope. So I'm gonna turn on our microscope and let's see what her head looks like over there. Here we go. Okay, there she is. And her head looks like a bud at the very tip. Let me move her back there. There it is. Very tip of a branch. If we zoom in, I want you to see how amazing the texture is on her head too. I'm gonna do a little refocus here. There it is. You can see all of those tiny bumps. And if you look at our antennas, you may notice a couple of funny things about her antenna. One of her antenna is a lot longer than the other. And her antenna looks like there are little tiny leaves on the end right there too. <laughs> now, I was also thinking, if you think her head looks like a bud, I should probably show you her other side too. Let go. There she is. Oh, she's walking. Oh, can you see her walking there? Oh, now she's holding still. Okay, let's zoom in and see if you think her head or her abdomen looks more like a bud today. Here we go. And I'll refocus right here. There we go. Oh, there it is. You can really see her abdomen right there too. The very tip, the egg land. Nice. I'm gonna zoom out here and let's see if anyone has any questions about these stick insects. Yeah, we don't have any right now, but if anybody wants to um, put in a question, we will uh, try to answer it. I, you were asked, somebody did ask about baby cockroaches. Oh yeah. I did want you to see some of the eggs of the stick insect. I just put a dish of eggs and poop or frass, that's what we call it when we're talking about bug poop, under the microscope. I'm gonna zoom in. I want you to move closer to your screen, get your nose up there close, and see if you can tell which of these is a stick insect egg and which you think is insect frass or insect poop. Take a close look there. These are all eggs that this girl has laid since she's been at my house. Mm -hmm. Nice and long. Perfect. And as I change over from our microscope back to our Zoom screen here, I want to make sure you have a chance to ask any other questions. And I want to show you a few things you can do this weekend, too. So let me pick up our stick insect. All right, we've got a couple more questions. Perfect. One is also about how old do they get? Um, and then what do they eat? So those are two for you. Nice. Now for the stick insects, they start out really, really tiny. And it takes them about five months to grow full size, which is her size. She's longer than my fingers right here. And they can live to be one or two years old as well, these stick insects. So both of these insects, you know, good over a year old. So you are officially older than my bugs today. And then um, what do they eat? Oh, and then there was a question back to your, um, your egg and poop one just to make sure people had it right, which they were curious oh, yeah. which. <laughs> now, what did they eat? Do they eat plants? 
So I'm in no, no danger of being bit by the stick insect. Instead, they eat plants. They especially eat leaves. Now, let me separate out. Oh, oh I see where it is. I'm going to move the camera a touch. There we go. Now, right here. here I'm just going to take one egg and put it on the microscope. So that's the egg right there. And zooming in, you can see it has a little hat or a cap at the very top, a little black button. And when this baby stick insect or the nymph is ready to hatch out, this top piece right here will pop out and an entire baby stick insect will pull itself out. It's, if you've ever seen a video of a giraffe giving birth, it looks somewhat like that. <laughs> Let's see. And then somebody and, asked why they shed. Oh, why they shed? Since they start out so tiny and have to grow so big, they shed their exoskeletons every time they go to grow or molt. And so the cockroaches do the same thing. Like this is the skin or the shed exoskeleton or molt of one of our growing cockroaches. So it's just an empty hollow shell like a suit of armor. And so when they go to grow, they shed that, they pull the bodies out, and then they stretch up and harden a new exoskeleton. It would be pretty creepy, amazing if humans grew that same way. Nice. Now I have a few things I want you to know before we go. First of all, it is going to be a gorgeous weekend. And I want everyone to head outside this weekend and do some bug hunting. If you look at the museum's uh, web page at the Montshire at Home, what you're going to see there is a bug scavenger hunt and big O game. So let's see. Oh, there it is. Good. So grab that at home, head outside, do some scavenger hunting. And then also for the Montshire Live at Home, we're gonna do this again in two weeks on May 29th, Friday, May 29th. We're gonna have Dr. Jerry De Silva join us from Montshire Live. And he's gonna be sharing his bone collection with you. Cause that week our theme at home is all bones and skeletons. So a lot of things to look forward to. Head outside this weekend, come back, check out those bones in a couple of weeks. And before we go, Amy, I like you, Amy, but Amy did have one more question she wanted to ask you. Our last question for you. If you have more questions though for us, we're gonna stay on a little longer, answer some other questions. But Amy, what's the, what's the last question you wanted to ask people today? Okay, here we go. Sorry, I had muted myself because my dog was being very loud. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Final question. Oh, Amy. <laughs> Come on, everyone. Let's see what you have to say. Uh-oh. I like you too. I just want to remind you of that. At least you didn't put in there if I should a cockroach. That sounds like Amy. <laughs> and as we're waiting for that last question, what we're going to do as we sign off is I have a video, a short video of one of those stick insects hatching. So I'm going to play that as people start to sign off. And if you have more questions, definitely feel free to stay on and we can answer some more questions too. Yeah. Amy? After gonna say if for some reason you put a question in that I never got to and answered put it in again once the video is going and we'll come back to it I just kind of there were a lot of questions going on for a while so let me end this poll and Rebecca yes. eighty three percent of the people think it's an excellent idea okay here it goes come here boy 
Oh gosh, yeah, I can feel his feet in my hair. See there? There. That's what you do for science. Oh. Oh, don't worry, he's safe. I caught him. <laughs> well, have a great time heading outside, doing some bug bingo this weekend. Let me show you that video as folks sign off, and we'll see what questions you have afterwards. Perfect. There we go. Hatching, pulling itself out of that egg. Perfect, and that is a brand new walk and stick insect. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's see, so Amy, did anyone have some extra follow-up questions? Yeah, um, it's a question about ladybugs, about yeah. how they grow their skin, but I think it's true that all insects kind of grow their skin the same way, so. Yes, but it's really different. The two insects we saw today they both grew from a tiny nymph that looked just like a miniature version of the adult. But ladybugs and butterflies do a completely different way of growing. They grow by having a complete metamorphosis, which means they start as a larva. And it's a larva or caterpillar stage that grows, sheds its skin, grows, sheds its skin. A caterpillar can grow and shed its skin and exoskeleton, you know, six to 10 times before it's big enough to turn into a butterfly. Or a ladybug larva can do that same thing, growing and eating, growing and eating before it turns into an adult ladybug. So lots of growing if you're a bug. And then there's a couple questions about how it um, can fold up both in that egg, but as an adult, can it also fold up its legs and get smaller? No, what happens when the walking stick first hatches, and this happens also when they first molt, when they sh come out of that egg or they come out of that skin or exoskeleton, what they do is their bodies are really, whoops, really soft and flexible right then. So it's only when they're soft and flexible that they can bend like that out of an egg or when they molt. When she, the she's has already finished growing, but if she was going to molt again, she would split down the back, pull her body out of it and leave that empty shell. And that's a really soft, she's gonna be soft for a few hours then and very vulnerable. She has to hold perfectly still so her legs were straight and be hard and straight when they harden up. Yeah, so glad we don't do that. And then um, a couple questions have come in about their antenna. What are antenna good for? Oh, antenna are amazing. <laughs> that wasn't, that was just aesthetic. That wasn't the insect. Antenna are, ama are amazing for picking up chemicals and clues in the air. Whoops. Let me show you. This is a boy. He has some really nice antenna. Let me see how close I can get his antenna. Mm, I may have to use the microscope. There he goes. Hold still. Now with the microscope, let me grab that over. With the microscope, you can see that his antenna are made up of all these small litter segments and they're covered in hair. It's only under the microscope you can see how fuzzy those antenna are. And it's those litter hairs that are picking up chemicals and smells. 
cockroaches understand the world through smell much more than sight. Their eyes can only tell light and dark. It's your antenna that lets them know the world. Let me see. This is kind of, a, are you ready for a, well, let me see what else we've got here. I, I know I've missed a few questions, so I'm very sorry, but those of you who are still here, if you do have other questions, go ahead and sign, put them in. Otherwise, I think in a minute or two, we're pro, oh, well, there was one. How about they, how do they make babies? Maybe you just answered that. I'm not sure. Let's see, depending on the species, most insects make babies, just like the way most fuzzy animals do. So the male and the female will breed, and then they'll lay those eggs. And those eggs will hatch into either a tiny larva or caterpillar or one of those nymphs. But some insects, and this one is really special, this stick insect right here, she is a rare animal that doesn't have to mate with a male. She can just lay eggs and they all hatch out into girls. That's how I know she's a girl. But usually it takes a boy and a girl to be able to make and lay those eggs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and once they, some insects, once they lay eggs, they only lay eggs once in their life. And once they're done with that, their life, you know, they're old and they die of old age. Other insects can lay multiple batches of eggs over months or years. Like the cockroaches, they have multiple batches of nymphs, but most butterflies only lay eggs once and then they die. I saw that question in the side too. So different approaches to how to make babies. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here's another ladybug question from our friend Bix. Um, yeah. Where do they live or what do they live in? Do you know? Because I don't, other than my house, which I seem to have a lot of ladybugs in my house, I don't know where they live. You'll find them where their food is. In the winter, they like to come inside where it's warm. But in the summer, when they're active and having babies and growing, you're going to find them outside. And ladybugs are really cute polka dotted evil predators. They are hunters. Think of them as the lion of the insect world. And what they're hunting are these green aphid insects. They're ferocious aphid hunters. Even the babies will hunt and catch those aphids to have them for lunch. So you'll find those baby ladybugs outside in the wild in the summer with their grown-ups too. All right, this is so cool. Oh, all right. Uh, I think we are going to say goodbye to everybody. And um, it was so great. We're sorry that uh, with a big group, it's hard to see everybody's faces, but we were very happy to know you're out there. And um, hopefully uh, we'll see you again in two weeks when we do this with Jerry De Silva. Yeah. All right. We're going to end the meeting. Bye-bye, everybody.